Yeah, let's talk about the the Netflix kind of Holocaust. Don't nobody like. Oh, don't <laughs> joke about that. <laughs> the, but the word Holocaust is off the table. <laughs> it's just, you made me that just, person. Put that I blame you too. Yeah. We blame you because you're fucking German. Radiophonic sea creatures, perm your hair and forget how to use common sense because I, Tokyo Choo Choo, am going to be your host today. And with me, as always, are two men who have mastered the secret martial art of Akigabu Kamrate. It's Human Metal and Brack. How are you guys? How are you, Human Metal? The what now? The, the secret martial art of Akigabu Kamrate. And what's my special move? Gargling come. Because okay. that's. <laughs> I don't know. I well, thought well, that was. <laughs> I thought it was like the it. general, <laughs> you the general move set of, of, of that martial arts, or that's what it sounded like. I thought there was some, I don't know, spe- specific twist to it. There is a specific some twist Some form to of it. a doken, like spitting it into someone's eye and then well, encapis- enca- encapis- there's, a, there's, a, there's a twist and there's spitting in someone's eye. This is, this is spitting out of the eye. This has gone too far now, human metal. How are you, <laughs> human metal? Long time no see, by the way. I'm fine. Uh, I'm great, actually. Um haven't been doing a lot besides watching a bunch of shows playing zelda and working so there's that but yeah fun times how about you brack how are you i'm great you know it's it's uh, finally uh, like good weather again i'm drinking lots of beers being outside playing video games oh, watching God. movies reading books going outside i know what going outside are you i know no it's dangerous right going outside yes there are bears out there, so like but in the Netherlands, yeah, I'm, land. I'm doing great. Yes, I'm doing amazing. How oh, are you I... doing, Choo Choo? Oh yes, yes. I so the, the less said about my life, the better. But yes, I'm having a good time. The weather is not good though. It just won't stop raining. Oh, He's Jesus. living on the streets. He is like, I, I suck your dark dick for a loot case, like for for much, like something like that. That's that's what's happening in his life. <laughs> Actually, I was swimming in loot cases since I've been playing with you, Brack. You're a fucking ninja at that game. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, let, hey, let's let's get into what's on the show today. Human Metal, uh, you said you were, you had been playing Zelda, right? So let's let's uh, let's yes. have, uh, talk about that because I'm anxious to hear how Breath of the Wild is. Yeah, I uh, bought me one of those snazzy new switches, and uh, of course. Uh, and did, after that, I didn't have enough money to buy Zelda, so I borrowed it from a friend. <laughs> ah, take, take, taking the leaf out of Brax's playbook. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, Except the Brax's best friend is the library. Yeah, <laughs> and I didn't have, even have to pay library free, fees, though I'm gonna actually buy the game from a, f- a friend of mine at the end of the, uh, from that friend at the end of the month. So there's that, because he wants to get the Japanese version anyway. Yeah, Breath of the Wild, amazing game. Uh, you know, if you've looked at the review scores for for that title, you know, uh, when it came out, uh, I, no, I I think in the beginning it was like a 98, so I'm like, oh yes, this is great. But then it went down to a 97, and now I think it's yeah, like you're trash, right. Trash does not <laughs> worth my time anymore. Exactly, <laughs> total garbage. <laughs> no, yeah, but honestly, uh, weird. Uh, rage about stupid numbers aside uh yeah uh, i i have to agree with most of the, most of those reviews this game is fucking amazing and uh we you know we joked about this or bragged it when uh, uh we were talking about spoilers uh, uh the last time in terms of Zelda. it was like what is there to spoil about zelda like why why do you even uh, why why do you not look at tweets or anything you know what's already going to be in there and I said, like, no, I don't think so. I don't. I think this game is trying to be different from the, you know, at least the Zelda's that came in re- uh, that came in recent years. Yeah, I heard this one has like horrible voice acting, so at least it has that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and no option to choose the Japanese voice track with the English subtitles. So fuck you, Nintendo. Uh, only Japanese voice acting with Japanese subtitles and English voice acting with English subtitles. Still, well, it finally caught up with Shenmue, but it's it's never going to beat Shenmue because Shenmue has the classic. Should I have some more fun? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, close enough though. 
uh, yeah, some of those voices are bad. But that's one of the few like things I would even complain about in this game is the voice acting. Uh, aside from that, yeah, there is so much new stuff, at least to the Zelda franchise in this game. Like, let's start with how the game treats its players. Uh, the recent Zelda games have been very handholdy. There's a lot of tutorial stuff in the beginning. There's like, okay, now you get that, this stuff. You, Okay, we show you how to do this stuff and that stuff. And maybe then sometime in the future, you go out in the world and do things. But even then, you're on a very linear path uh, towards you know, your story finale and everything. And this game is not like that at all. Um, you have like this small beginning area in the, you know, in the very beginning, but you're past that very quickly. You like basically get all of your powers in the beginning that you would get in dungeons normally, and then you, you know, leave that plateau, and can do whatever the fuck you want. Basically, you can go. You see a, some mountain volcano in the beginning. You can go there. You can go. You can even go to the final boss of the game directly in the beginning. You will die. <laughs> if you're not a speedrunner or anything, but you can just go to the final dungeon and just beat him if you want to, if you're capable enough. And that's, you know, that's one of those amazing things. Uh, uh, you get around mainly by walking. You can, you know, uh, tame horses and everything, but I didn't find them too useful. It's a nice thing to have once in a while, but, you know, you want to you wanna explore anyway, so you do most of the stuff you do by foot, and because you, you know, you can climb anything, you know, this is what, what you want to do. You don't want to get off your horse, horse every time. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I did most of the time. Just went out into the wilderness and tried to explore stuff. Uh, didn't even bother <laughs> with the story dungeons or anything in the beginning. Just, you know, let's look at shit. And, uh, yeah, that's amazing. And once you get to certain areas, you can unlock fast travel points and everything. So that's neat. Uh, the game doesn't bombard you with tasks you know, which other open world games do. It's like, okay, here's like this bunch of side quests you can do where you collect a bunch of, you know, stupid shit you don't need aside from those side quests. Zelda doesn't do that. If you want to you want to have something interesting marked on the map, you do that yourself. You know, you get way my, uh, um, waypoint markers and everything, but you set them yourself. The game doesn't do that for you, except for, you know, the mainline quests and everything. And yeah, that's pretty cool. And uh, a lot of people were criticizing that... Um, you know, the weapon uh, durability in this game because your weapons can break pretty fast, actually. And I was, you know, uh, I was worried about that in the beginning because usually I hate that. But you get so many weapons in this game. Every enemy you fight drops his weapon after you beat him. So it's not like you're there's a part of the game where you stand around and have no weapon. Uh, that never happened to me. Uh, you can, you know, you can collect things so you can expand your inventory and stuff like that. So that makes it easier to keep more weapons in your inventory. And then you're like, okay, I got just an arsenal of weapon. Maybe keep like two very strong ones for bosses or something. And aside from that, you just use every weapon at your leisure. And uh, yeah, it's, it works. It's not like this is bothersome or anything. Uh, if you want to stick with one weapon throughout the entire game, if you're that kind of guy, then yeah, that's probably not going to happen, except for maybe that one special weapon. You can imagine what it is because it's a Zelda game. But uh, yeah, uh, aside from that, uh, your weapons will break. <laughs> you, you just have to deal with that. And like I said, it didn't bother me too much. But yeah... Uh, I just, I found the world, this is the best overworld in Zelda, period. Like, and I I don't, I I can't imagine it going any other way from now. <laughs> At some point it has to because it's going to get stale. But still, this is one of the most immersive, I don't know, well-designed, well-structured, beautiful, uh, just from an art uh, perspective and anything, uh, designed game worlds I've seen and it's gigantic there's so much stuff to see and do in this game and so much stuff just to, just to stumble about like oh okay I didn't know this shit was here there's these hundreds of shrines which are like these mini dungeons where you can uh, solve puzzles get treasures uh, and at the end of each uh, of those you get like um, basically a heart piece uh, and, you know four heart pieces make one heart container and stuff like that so yeah, a bunch of those are around and they're fun in my opinion. Uh, and yeah, like I said, a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> and pretty much the only con of this game I can think of that bothered me were uh, the story dungeons because 
they are basically just bigger shrines and you know if you play it like ocarina of time wind waker um twilight princess skyward sword the dungeons were the best parts about those uh, those games and you know they were all um themed in an interesting way and you don't really have that in this game they're still cool like they got still cool puzzles and everything but it's not like oh here's the forest dungeon here's the fire dungeon and everything no that's that's not how this game you know does things uh so they're a bit samey and they're not like this super huge thing with like this weird creative bosses and at the uh, end of every dungeon there are bosses but they are also a bit samey so uh yeah that was the only down th thing for me like you know if this game with the some of the dungeons from twilight princess or ocarina of time would have been like probably i don't know my all-time favorite zelda game <laughs> And it could e it could even be my all time favorite Zelda game. I I haven't decided on that yet, but I think it has at least uh, beaten Ocarina of uh, at least beaten Link to the Past. I don't know about o Ocarina of Time. Not sure. Uh, have to play them back to bed, uh, back I guess. But yeah, aside from that, it's a fantastic game. If you have a Switch, if you have a Wii U, play it. If you have apparently a PC, a good PC with an emulator, you can now play the Wii U version on an emulator. Yay! Uh, so there's that. But aside from that, I think this is one of those games that you should have played if you like open world games, if you like adventure games, if you like good games in general. It's just it's just, just one of those must-have titles. It's fantastic. I loved every second of it. I don't know how many hours I put into it. I think... I don't know. I really don't know. I have to look it up. But it's a bunch. Like It's it's reaching the 100-hour one hour, uh, hour mark or something. I don't know. Cool. Yeah. I, I, Talking about so. the 100-hour mark... Which is how it seems like, how long you talked. Yeah, uh, so, yeah I, I was about to say, I was, like, I, I was really looking forward to hearing Human Metal talk about Zelda, Well, you, and, did, well, and you didn't you interrupt me. <laughs> you didn't interrupt me. You didn't ask questions. I, think... well, I don't have shit to say about, about Zelda, Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I think like, the I... only thing about it, know about it is the, is the emulator. But the emulator is actually running pretty well so far, it seems. Yeah, you should try it. I know you, aren't, you don't intend to buy a Switch, so... Yeah, I actually might try it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Oh, I think I lost the will to live somewhere in human metal speech. Jesus, human metal. You should have, inter <laughs> you should have interrupted me then. <laughs> Let's say, shut the fuck up! Shut up! Although, although I have some, you know, I had some time, uh, you know, from you talking about Overwatch all the time. So uh, uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Well, welcome, welcome back, human metal, in the zone there. Great. I wish I could talk like that. Fucking hell. In the motor mouth you can. <laughs> you did about Overwatch. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> But yes, uh, despite uh, despite losing the will to live, uh, I I am actually sort of I I had this moment with the Nintendo Switch where I was like, no, no, don't not not interested in the Switch. And then Zelda sort of came out and all the ruckus, and I was just I had that moment where I was just like, I have enough to buy a Switch right now and Zelda. <gasps> and I had that moment where I really like had to catch myself and just like slap myself on the wrist and say, no, don't you, do it. <laughs> you you do have a Wii U, don't you? I do have a Wii U, but it's not you could universal. Just play for Wii U. It's not universal. I have to go through the Japanese version. I don't want to do that. Doesn't the Japanese version have English text, though? I don't think so. Nintendo doesn't work that way. They're not that charitable. If you have a dollar in your pocket, Nintendo will take it. Well, the... the oh, I don't know how, how it's about the Wii U, but on the Switch, at least the US version has both the Japanese uh, language option and the American one. The problem is you just can't combine them. So you uh, can only, like I said, only play in Japanese with well, Japanese voices and Japanese text, or you know, English voices in English text. But so know, dumb. That, that, that will really take dumb. that will take research, which uh, I will have to. Yeah. You know, I will put research into that. I can but, do yeah, that they, research for you. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Uh -huh. Well, if they get back to me on that human metal, if it does have, perhaps I will. In fact, I will actually probably play that on Wii U. One caveat, though. Uh -oh. it's, of course, it doesn't run as good on the Wii U as on the Switch, and even on the Switch, it has some frame rate issues. So. Uh, there's one one specific area that's like really, woo. But aside uh, from that, with the with the most recent patch, they improved things a lot. So and I've I, heard that the PC version has a pretty decent st frame rate. To be honest, I don't I don't know. You know, with uh, emulators and everything, I'm skeptical because the, oh no, the I, Dolphin I, emulator has been you know really uh, up and down in that regard. You really need the beast of a PC to work. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a problem. True. It's true. But I'm pretty sure that in like half a year, the PC version probably has the best frame rate. Probably, yeah. If so, you have the right PC, like like a 
GTX 1080 or something. <laughs> TI. So how are your dogs recently, Human Metal? Why would you ask that? I'm scared. Because I'm, I'm heading into a segue for Watch Dogs. Brack! Oh, okay. <laughs> Great segue. Uh, you know what? The best thing like about Watch Dogs in compares to the first one, in Watch Dogs 2, there are actually way more dogs. And you can actually go up to them and pet them in, in the game as well. You know, so one, of, that's, one of the uh, most mean things I ever did in video game history is I, I accidentally crashed my car into like this, this park fountain in Grand Theft Auto 5, got out and immediately shotgunned to death this dog that was barking at me, and then felt genuinely bad about it afterwards. <laughs> Uh, I've oh. heard about people uh, because in GTA 5 yes, you have your own dog, right? In uh, like one of the characters, Franklin, I think, has his yes. own dog, mm. and you can throw a ball. But some mm. people threw the grenade, yeah. and then he goes after the grenade, <laughs> which is super mean. Actually, oh. people. I, I'm not sure if I've Every told this story. Every single one of them. I'm not sure if I've told this story on the Radiophonic Sea Creatures, but as an aside, like. The Grand Theft Auto 5 version on the PlayStation 4, the very first thing I did, when you get control of Franklin, like I was looking around in first person and my daughter was watching me and there was a cat. And I was just like, oh, look, there's a cat right there. And I pressed the action button and Franklin stamped on it. <laughs> and my daughter was like, oh, no. And then the cat got up and ran off. And I was like, no, no, it's OK. See? And it just ran onto the freeway and got squished. <laughs> yes. I remember. Uh, uh, so much violence. So much violence. Actually, in Watch Dogs 2, I actually uh, almost completed the game in a non-violent manner. Because uh, I actually got into the characters. And the main character is this kind of lovable, like, 20-year-old, like, geek dude. Hipster geek dude. Geek and dude. It, yeah, he's, he's very geeky. He's very nerdy. He's very much talking about, like, uh, there's at least a couple of points where he's talking about, like, who would win between the alien and the predator and stuff like that. Like so, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's very much a nerd character, and it it felt feels really weird when you have this kind of nerd character, and he's like running around with like a machine gun and blowing up like gangsters and shooting at the police and stuff. It feels very like uh, it really takes you out of it. So, because of that, I mainly used like the the, the, the two stun guns, and you have a oh, stun okay. grenade, and you actually in Watch Dogs 2 non-lethal run. Yeah, you can play it mostly non-lethal, and you can actually really. Uh, uh, there are a lot of hacking options. Uh, there are like a lot of hacking options, and <laughs> which which makes the game a lot better actually. Because <laughs> did you have a seizure or something? <laughs> no, no. Young boys and somebody their off screen. Somebody off screen wanted to like speak to me. I was like, oh my god, no, not right now. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, weird, you're Brax... just turning your head rapidly and then... <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think Br Brax's mom just yeah. came in and, and basically told him to tidy his room. <laughs> My room is very tidy. I throw you out of the house! <clears throat> uh, but, uh, uh, I was just shot by like one of the stun guns. Which I like to do in the game, but just walk around and just shoot somebody with the stun mm. gun and just fall over. But you got a lot of hacking, hacking options as well. Like there's even a lot of missions where you could just sit out of the mission area and just like pl let your bots do all the hard work and just hack everything. And like, oh, some guy standing, some drug dealer standing behind uh, a car. I'm going to make like hack the car and make it drive backwards to run him over and stuff like that. Okay, maybe not that, not little, but no <laughs> guts. <laughs> It like happens. one of one of the things I like to do is like when you run uh, driving like uh, uh, besides the cliff, you can make like the cars like make a hard turn, like the opposite, like the enemy cars, like the heck the cars, and make them just drive off the cliff completely into the water, which is very satisfying. But uh, <laughs> so <laughs> very mean. Basically, you're a hands-off psychopath. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to play it like. <laughs> Like, I'm a master. Like, like an asshole because I'm like, yeah, I'm not using like guns. I'm using not lethal. I'm using stun guns. And they're like, okay, this guy's in the car. Let's just let him drive off the cliff. <laughs> Make it look like an accident at least. So you, I don't know. <laughs> this all sounds weirdly planned out by you. Like yeah. you have done this in real life before, with other means, not with hacking. <laughs> Although we I don't just, know. Maybe you're a hidden master hacker or something. Yes, I just put like the serial killer guns body. In the car, I just put like uh, uh, like a block of stone on like the. Uh, yeah, there we go. Practically <laughs> hiding the crow style. 
hide, hiding in the back seat with a with a bit of floss like around the steering wheel, just yanks the floss and then goes off the cliff. And he's like, he's still in the back of the car though, so his plans all fucked. <laughs> that's and then that's a horrible plan. Die. That's not a good plan at all. <laughs> just got the brakes like a normal person. That's, uh... <laughs> Rag knows his shit. <laughs> you fucking psycho. <laughs> you beardy fuck. Uh... <laughs> but I don't I... have money for for expensive toys. <laughs> Uh, I'm just thinking really of a huge ass chilling on a now. budget. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brack, it's gone off the rails here. Uh, but, no, 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 he's pushed other people on the rails. <laughs> yes, they're I've, actually. They're, they're just not trained. I've done that in, in Red Dead Redemption. Of course. Actually, one of the first things I did in Red Dead Redemption when I was in Mexico, and I took this nun and I just put her on the rails. Dude, do you know? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know that guy who's asking you to get his wife flowers? That's what happened to that motherfucker. <laughs> no. Uh, but uh, uh, back to the point. I really like Watch Dogs too. Like San Francisco is very beautiful in the game. It made me want to go to San Francisco, like on vacation. So or it's something. not like the real San Francisco at all. <laughs> I've never been to the real San Francisco. I heard bad things. Because on of the this street. game, I was like, oh, I want to really go there. This looks, looks really nice. It, like it's. They really made the city feel like a real place with like lots of unique like uh, uh, graffiti and like lots of like landmarks in there, mm -hmm. and uh, it looks really pretty. It has like a, one of the best like virtual tourist games I've ever played, and uh, the story I really like the story. I like the characters, even though some of them are a little bit obnoxious, and overall the game is just it's just great. I actually like it so much that I played enough to get the platinum on the PS4. That's how much I like wow. it. So yeah. Great game. Go play it. Or cool. Yeah. yeah. Seems like an improvement over the first uh, installation about like 200% or something. Yeah, it's like a complete 180. Like the first one has like this really like if I have to describe the first Watch Dogs as a color, it should be like gray. It's just gray. Like the entire the gameplay is gray. The characters gray. The, the, the it looks gray. It's just like boring. So it's like gray. It's like spending half an hour in the same room as Human Metal. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, except there's there's less Jewish people die. Um. <laughs> fun times, fun times. Spoken like a true psychopath. Hey, um, hey, Bre Bre Breck chimed into that stuff when he visited, so don't blame only me. Oh, Breck, you down with that? Yeah, well, you, well you know, hide in the back seat with Jewish car, trying to. <laughs> Cut their brakes. <laughs> I don't know what, what you sick fucks do in your free time. Well, how do you like cut the brakes from like the back seat of a car? I don't See, know I do don't that. know these things. Brack does. <laughs> Just digging yourself a deep hole there, Brack. <laughs> like the holes you dug for all those poor sons of bitches you, whose cars you crashed, you son of a bitch. Um, so yeah, he incinerated them. He didn't bury them. This You've seen Breaking Bad. Come on, you know uh, you know how to do it. Getting rid of all the evidence. He's, so, a, he's a psychopath, but he's not stupid. Talking about stupid psychopaths, let's talk about WrestleMania. Um, yeah! <laughs> great <laughs> segue. Anyway. WrestleMania season has come and gone. So, uh, as a huge wrestling fan, I had like three hours for NXT TakeOver Orlando. And then the next day, I had like five hours plus for WrestleMania. I didn't watch the pre-show. Fuck that pre-show. Um, you missed a great match, though. I to it. Yeah. Did I? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. The cruiserweight, the cruiserweight match was. Yeah, cruiserweight match was really good. Let's let's not get bogged down in too too much of a technicality because most people won't won't know what we're talking about. But yeah, anyway, so fi I was terrified of WrestleMania because it's five hours of pro wrestling. That's too much pro wrestling for any one yeah. man, even me as a huge. And pro the lead fan. up wasn't too good to it. Like the oh. storylines and how they were panning out seemed like luster and everything. So. And not only Hopes that, weren't high. But the the, the the a couple of previous WrestleManias were quite pap. Especially the last one. The previous one was quite quite crappy, actually. Mm. But this one, I have to say, this one was great. This was a really good WrestleMania, I thought. Until the end. Well, yeah, mm, no. Yeah, that match was a bit... The, the final match between... the Spoiler alert here for WrestleMania. If you're a wrestling fan you haven't watched WrestleMania, then why why haven't you watched it? If you're a huge wrestling fan, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's only the biggest wrestling event in the, in the year, but yeah. yeah. Like, 
but yeah um so this this quickly touch on a quick uh, a few high points here for the show for me like um shane mcmahon aj styles is amazing oh yeah yep to everybody i did ex- not expect that to go that well like nobody es- especially from well. from shane's you know point of view god damn the, the, he he did put in the work yes he did he he was all over the place it was amazing that that like that that springboard into the the triangle choke oh jesus christ that's amazing the 450 mm. into the triangle choke amazing spot just a, a lot of great press. fun yeah it's uh the the ladder match obviously the hardy's returning oh, like, everybody jumped so out there good went fucking crazy oh my god it's like a, for like, me the match of the evening actually like i i really really like the ladder match just all the way through, from beginning to end i was highly entertained well, of course, it's a ladder match. I mean, when you're not going to be entertained, there are match. shitty, there are shitty ladder matches. Don't let's oh. not kid ourselves. Oh, but are... just you know, the team composition in this one was great, and mm. you know, the Hardys giving their all with, uh, with the return and everything. Yeah. It was just super entertaining. That was the, definitely so. the biggest pop of the night. That was amazing. Um, mm. uh, and then I, I personally, there was the Miz and John Cena match. I like that just because simply. How the the crowd treated the Miz was hilarious. He yeah. was supposed to be the heel, and they just went for him 110. percent Hysterically the, funny. The, to, to be fair, the only person who probably wouldn't get you know uh, cheers against John Cena would be Roman Reigns. So no. there's that. <laughs> that's right. But as, as a big fan of the Miz myself, he is my favorite yeah. pro wrestler for better or worse. Like he, um, I just I love that. Just and the thing is, the Miz played to it perfectly. He just. His, promo, his promos for this were really good. Like, you know, the the whole angle and everything. And you know why they were so good? Because there is, you know, a, a grain of truth to yeah, what he course. said. You know, uh, all, uh, you know the, 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 the relationship of, of those two looking like a sham and, you know, being basically just, you know, promotion vehicle and everything. He's right. Yeah. <laughs> his, his relationship seems more, it seemed more genuine and everything. So, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Hats off to the Miz. He had a, he had his breakout year last year. Had the had the feel oh, yeah. of the year with Dolph Ziggler and is just doing good stuff in general. But match of the I match still of the don't show, like him. I know <laughs> you don't have to like. I love him though. I've always loved him since he was with tagged with John Morrison. Like I mean, he's a he's a great heel, but I don't like the way he wrestles. There's a point to how he wrestles, and it makes sense for him and everything. But it's not just entertaining to watch. That's in my opinion. So. We shouldn't get bogged. Uh, we, yeah, we're literally turning into a wrestling podcast if we were about to debate. Well, that, we but... turned into a Breath of the Wild podcast a few minutes ago. So, <laughs> but, uh, match match of the night for me was Goldberg Brock Lesnar. I thought it was absolutely perfect for what it was. It was short. They didn't. They they did everything they needed to do in that match. It only went seven minutes, but it was like the yeah. blockbuster, hellaciously exciting seven minutes. I was jumping on my chair. Well, they were crazy just, for you that know, match. Well, they were just spamming out their signature moves, but of course, but you don't want them to at wrestle least any longer than that. You don't not want just them the spear. to. <laughs> yeah, at least not just the spear, and then the match after is over after one minute, which were the past Goldberg yeah. matches. And you know, I, br- less than one. I don't know how much good it did him after being like basically no, no, annihilated no, he, the last two times. He recovered. But... Basically, no, no. But what happened, right? He he basically got taken by surprise by Goldberg one time, and then Goldberg yeah. kind of threw him out the rumble, but that was no biggie. He didn't, you know, he didn't really lose anything. He just got thrown out the rumble. Yeah. But then finally, when the, you know, push came to shove, he was ready for Goldberg. He took him down. And the way he took him down was just great. It was just like, whether that initial storm was just like, you know what, Goldberg, fuck you. <laughs> and then bang, 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 dead. I w- I'm just still a bit miffed about how, you know, Goldberg took out Kevin Owens. It was like, ah, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you, yes. WWE, for this stupid bullshit storyline. Yeah, uh, Goldberg's gone now, and I'm sure Kevin Owens is going to find his feet again and, and do good oh, yeah. stuff, so definitely. Well, he, he did anyway. Yeah, so. yeah, he had a great match at WrestleMania, of course. And then yeah. finally, qu- let's quickly talk about The Undertaker retiring, because uh, fuck that match. It was a terrible match. And The Undertaker, yeah. as sad as it was to see The Undertaker retire, he needed to retire. He did need to. Like yeah, 50, he, right? no, no, no. He needed to retire like, like when when ago. Brock Lesnar ended his streak. That was a good yeah, moment maybe. to uh, to retire. He still had some good matches after that, but mm. for you know, I would have, mm. I would have like, I, I would have said like, okay, I, I can I can deal with not having those matches if this one didn't happen. Like yeah. this was so undignified. This was so embarrassing. It was just you know. 
Roman Reigns beating on an old man yeah. and he, who couldn't lift I, up the guy to do a tombstone pile driver and it was oh, yeah, it was, no, oh that, no. That, that, they, I don't think that was Roman Reigns' fault to be fair I think that was no, a no, bit, I that mean, was no, 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 I mean it was the Undertaker's fault he couldn't yeah, just he that was do awful. help with the reversal it that was, was just it was terrible so, it was so horrible uh, to look at it hey, was, how old is the Undertaker? Nasty. it went so long how oh. old is he? he's like 60 right at least yeah. something it was it was it was a genuinely heartbreaking moment to see that the Undertaker couldn't get up for the tombstone. It was just like it was like no, I, oh, it just sucks the wind out of you. But yeah, it's uh, but yeah, he yeah. he retired and you know uh, as always, fuck Roman Reigns because you know they but the WWE are doing a really good job with Roman Reigns. So everybody wants Roman Reigns to turn heel, but everybody's like almost oblivious to the fact that he is a heel. And they've just gone about it in a completely different way. It's like a new type of heel where the company's no. making him heal by pushing him in your face. Like, hey, Roman Reigns is amazing. It just makes him No, I think that's him. just obliviousness. I don't think that's no, intentional. I, I, I think it's absolutely intentional. I think I th they, they have made him a heel, but they're pushing it a new way where they're pretending he's the face, but he's not. He's Everybody at, knows he's the heel. At, at some point, you just, you know, you, you're past that point of no return and you just go with it and make him the obvious heel and let him say that and do those things. I don't know, but... And not trying to sell him still like, oh, he's but, but he's the... like the best you know, guy for this job and he's an amazing wrestler, which he isn't. So, uh, this is all it's right. weird. But, but he's again, all right. Humor, let me pose this one question to you and then we'll move off because, like, Brack is losing the will to live here. Like but... I, I, I actually wanted to add something. I want to add hey, something well, about the Undertaker. Like, we're, we're talking about the Undertaker and uh, I don't know anything about wrestling. I haven't seen wrestling. But on Twitter, I saw a couple of pictures of, uh, of uh, uh, the Undertaker and if you see him from a, some kind of angle, he looks a lot like Fraser, and that's hilarious to me. <laughs> 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 that's the only thing I've had. Works well enough. I don't know if you've seen those pictures, but it's really funny. <laughs> I want to see those pictures, Brack. Oh, uh, I do. Uh, Praise is amazing. Uh, uh, like, they give like a quick link that you can see it. You're here, right oh, here. Yeah, click on it. Okay, I'm just going to click on this link there, Brack. No, it just looks like the Undertaker to me. <laughs> yeah. I can, I can see yeah, it kind of. It looks a bit like Frazier, but... I see I'm so familiar with the Undertaker, it just doesn't work. Yeah. Like, but, like, Human Metal, though, one one thing about Roman Reigns quickly. If they did turn him heel, it would mean that you might kind of like him, because if he's playing a heel and he's doing a good job as a heel, you might start to oh. like him. No? I, I, I don't like... I don't like The Miz. And he's a good heel, mm. so... <laughs> Yeah, At see. least for me, it would not work. <clears throat> oh well. No, I feel like Roman Reigns is like it's it's for him. It's the same as for John Cena. Uh, the the uh, kids and the girl, uh, the women like him. No. So I don't think he so. has his target group. It's not like the vocal uh, majority. So no, no, it is the vocal majority without question. He's he's like he's like ninety five five. I think in the heel department. I think the WWE are definitely doing good stuff with him. They know but, he's a bad guy and they're playing it perfectly. They're pushing he's it always, in your face. He's always saying he's not the good guy, he's not the bad guy, he's the guy. Mm. It's so dumb. It's yeah, so, he's dumb. so dumb. But I, I have faith. I think the WWE are, know what they're doing and they're, they're, they're really pushing him as a bad guy in a snarky new way that hasn't been done before. Uh, but anyway, that's let's, smart. let's stop talking about that because we have Seriously, I could talk about wrestling all night. I'm not going to because Brack would literally die. Um, what's next on your list, uh, Human Metal? Mm. Just a, thought, a, sh a short thing because I uh, talked two hours about Zelda. Um, and two hours more I about watched, wrestling. I watched, I watched a new sci-fi movie with Jake Gyllenhaal called Life. It's basically set on a space station and they get like a probe from Mars and are like, okay. Uh, Is the probe alive? The probe isn't alive, but they oh. got like uh, cell samples in it and hope to find life from Mars in it, and uh, they do. And you know, stuff, uh, hilarious shenanigans ensue from there. This is basically like uh, very much in the vein of Alien, and uh, it's, it's trying to emulate it in a lot of parts. It's beautiful, beautifully shot. It's a really good-looking movie. Um, and I liked it, but don't expect anything super special from it uh, or anything. It's just a pretty good, um, you know, little horror horror movie, and that's about it. It's Who not else is in it. Like, uh, uh yes, 
<laughs> I only yes. remember Jill. No, no I, I, I would have to look up the other names. And, I thought it was Ryan Reynolds in there as well. Right, uh, Ryan Reynolds is in uh, there too. Yes, uh, that's the other guy I remembered. And another actress I, I know, but I forgot her name. So, yeah, I've seen her <laughs> enough. It does look like Frasier. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's an, it's an it's an entertaining movie. The, the 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 script, just in dialogue sense, is not too strong. But aside from that, it's 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 a good little creature flick, and uh, yeah, I, I I always like those, and it's well made and everything. People were like speculating about it being an uh, an unofficial setup to the Venom movie, which is super dumb. <laughs> I don't That's even the, know. Where... I know why it is basically because they actually use some reaction shots from Spider Man in this movie. Okay. What? Yeah. They, 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 yes. Yes. That's that's that, that's supposedly what happened. Like they re, you, refurbished some like crowd shots from Spider Man uh, in okay. uh, in that movie. All right. Yeah. Still. Like you know. Still dumb. Th- yes. Fun fun little movie, but you can you can watch it, rent it when it's out on Blu-ray or something, but it's not like super super duper special or anything. It's just well made, short, entertaining fun. So yeah. there's that. I don't. Has there ever been a really like really great alien ripoff? Oh man, we'll have to we'll have to have that mm-hmm. conversation one day. We'll have to have oh, an yeah. episode dedicated have to, think to about alien it, it ripoff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's not that much good space horror out there. Predator was a pretty good one, but I really uh, liked uh, Sunshine. Yeah, but but I, that is I, not. I really haven't still haven't seen movie. Sunshine. Yeah, you haven't seen uh, Sunshine. Yeah, I, you should rectify that. That's a great film. Yeah, I have so I've heard. You know, giant backlog of movies. So yeah, Event Horizon is pretty. <laughs> we'll good see when I get to that. Mm. Hmm. All right, so th- there you go. That's uh, that's life for you, uh, Brack. What's next on your list? That's life. That's life. Oh, talking about uh, life, next... the, the the Ben Stiller film is excellent, by the way. Never seen that either. Oh, you should nope. rectify that. Oh, that's fu- Oh my god, dude, go out and watch that. That's great. Holy shit, that's that film's great. Anyway, Brack. Uh, yeah. Talking about space and aliens and stuff, uh, I watched the trailer for Thor Ragnarok, the new Thor movie, and it looks like it could be the first good Thor movie. No, that's Which... not true. Wait, 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 wait. You, you almost caught me off guard. <laughs> the first one was good, so yeah. shut up. <laughs> I, know, I know you guys like... I didn't really like the first Thor movie. Oh, and it. the second one was just horrible. Yeah. But... Uh, yeah, this, it was... it, yeah it, it, let's be honest. The second one was bad. Yeah, yeah kind of was... But it this, wasn't. It, it was, wasn't like, it was for Marvel. It was bad. Yeah. There are still, yeah. you know, much worse action movies out there. Like yeah, the, that's, that's, Thor, Thor Two was better than everything the Transformers franchise has dished out or anything. But you know, for Marvel standards, it was subpar. Compared to like, Batman, it's, it's one of the Marvel Superman. movie. It's one of the Marvel movies that we will never rewatch. And in general, I I actually rewatched like a lot of the Marvel movies at least once. So yeah, I've been meaning to watch Thor Two. I've been meaning to watch Thor 2 just recently, actually. But, yeah. Uh, I rewatched it. Like it's, sure idiot. you know, it's still pretty flat. Yeah, it's not good. But but let's talk about the new Thor movie, Thor yeah. 3, which looks Black amazing. Rock. It looks great. Uh, just like, yeah. I've only seen the teaser so far, mm. but it looks hilarious. It has, like, a really funny moments. They really play into, uh, seemingly play into uh, whatever Chris Hemsworth's, like, comedy chops a little bit more. And uh, it has yeah. It has a lot of, it feels a bit like uh, more like Guardians of the Galaxy yeah, now than the, the, the than it did does like a previous Thor movies or anything. It, it looks Just like in those, terms those, of the uh, sets and everything. So much so the that comedy. I, I'm gonna make a prediction. I'm gonna make a prediction. Four three Ragnarok is where Guardians of the Galaxy enters off somehow. Yeah, they they yeah, they're I gonna think merge. That's right. gonna happen. Okay, what it looks like is not just like a, it actually it has like a little sci-fi elements. But it reminds me mostly of like those '80s like science fiction fantasy movies, like like Crawl. It looks like you know Crawl, it, you know. It, it, it has looks a, like if they it has a Crawl, bitty... like through hundred million dollars. That's yeah, or a pretty big like. Flash Gordon vibe. Mm. Flash Gordon stuff like that. Yeah. And it it really works. At least for me, it really works. I really liked it, the director because uh, one of my favorite movies of last year was uh, Hunt for the Wilder People, which was. It's from the same director. Oh, it's from the same director. Okay. I, I, there's actually a, 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 like a, an Easter egg for that movie in uh, in the teaser for Thor Ragnarok, so that's pretty great. And uh, it has Jeff Goldblum in it, which is also amazing. And like this is a teaser, 
And uh, like in no- most movies, having like like you see Carl Urban like dual wielding machine guns. In most movies, that would be like a highlight. But in this teaser, it took me like three watches to even like notice that the, that that was on the screen. So that's how much good stuff is around it. So yeah, that that uh, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I, I like it. I always thought that Thor, when he was used for comic relief, uh, as in like in the original movie and in the Avengers, was just yeah, it did it worked gangbusters. So. I, I would like to see a more kind of sort of comedy, uh, more comedy orientated Thor movie. But wasn't the Ragnarok though supposed to be like a really dark kind of like end of the world type thing? Well, that that's how it looked in when they teased it in the second Avengers movie. But no, apparently not. They're just well, go full into it, 80s vibe. What I've heard it was like the, the movie was always going to be like a, a body cop, like that body, but the body like road trip movie with uh, Thor and Hulk so yeah cool I'm all in for that and I think it's got some nice uh, also you know if you if you are into the actual comics it feels like they're also trying to get close to the actual you know Jack Kirby designs from back when uh, you know so uh, yeah it's 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 cool stuff like the the stuff with the helmet and everything where <laughs> in the in the teaser it feels like okay <laughs> They're they're doing they're going into the right direction with uh, design and cheese and everything. I'm really looking forward to this now. When is it coming? November, right? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Somewhere later this year. That's right. We got so again. I don't we we're gonna get so much superhero stuff in the coming month. Yeah. And, uh, anyway, so I'm glad that it's in the back half of the year because we're gonna get uh, Guardians of the Galaxy at the end of this month. Then we're gonna have I think Spider-Man. next is no, I think Wonder Woman is next. And Spider Man. DC. That doesn't count. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you forgetting another superhero movie? Uh, Fast and the Furious 8? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to that. <laughs> Still have to watch 7. Uh, but I got it here. Maybe I'll watch that after the podcast. Mm. There you go. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, I think I think we can all agree we're all kind of uh, uh, looking forward to watching that film. Um, yeah, Thor mm-hmm. has a special place in my heart because I really, really, really loved the first the first Thor, like quite quite significantly. Um, and for Brag, it might be the first Thor movie he actually enjoys. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm going to talk about uh, a, a absolutely fantastic movie which I watched uh, recently. It's the the fifth one in the franchise, it, and it is simply called Jason Bourne. So. I'm a big fan of the uh, the Born Identity series. Uh, I thought the first three movies were fantastic. Well, two of them were fantastic. Uh, one of them was just like one of the best action movies of all time, um, which was the second one. Seriously, The Born Supremacy is like one of the best action movies ever. I dare you to disagree. Really? It's amazing. Yeah, I enjoyed amazing. The Ultimatum more. Yeah, I, I actually I enjoy Ultimate more, but it has been a long time since I watched those movies. Oh yeah, me too. So, like at that point, like I know the second one has like Carl Urban as the bad guy, and I don't even remember that, and I really like that actor, so I should rewatch it at some point. Uh, yeah, you uh, you are flat out objectively you are flat out wrong about that. The second one is better. <laughs> like it, it has. Uh, I don't it think has the better car chase, maybe, but no, the rest, it's the better I don't film. know. It has, it's just a better film. It has the heart, like, the because of the events of the film when his girlfriend gets killed, um, Jason Bourne's anger and sadness and also kind of regret about, you know, his, his ways of killing and stuff. It just makes that film like an emotional, thunderous roller coaster. I, I beg you, go back and watch that series because I'm telling you, you're absolutely wrong. The second one is better. Maybe you got caught up in the excitement of the third one, but ultimately... The second one is definitely the better film, without fucking question, because the third one just repeats what the second one did. It has the best fight sequence, but it doesn't have the heart of the second one. It doesn't have the emotional connection. Like, it doesn't have that amazing peak scene where Jason Bourne's, like, sat in the room apologizing to someone at the end of the film. No, it does have it, but it does it in the fir- in the first act, and it's just, like, this pale rip-off of the, the scene in the second one. That's why I don't like the third one much, because it just tries to repeat what the second one did just like with more explosions and it does it doesn't quite work for me the second one works on a really great emotional level but let's talk about the best jason bourne film ever made which is the fifth one which is jason bourne which was no no i'm joking it was crap it was rubbish it was okay so was bad like, okay like i know your taste in movies so i was like 
is he just full of shit right now? Like he somewhere sometimes is. But he's not gonna move. Oh, is he really like? I'm just waiting for the shoe to drop, like for you to realize, like, no, no, Jason Bourne is is, is dark shit. Yeah, it's it's crap. like <laughs> it's rubbish. It's awful. It's crap. The only decent thing about that final Jason Bourne film is the moment where it turns into the Fast and the Furious for a couple minutes at the end. Oh yeah, with like the the, the race sequence through like Las Vegas, I think, yeah. or something. <laughs> and you got the big truck smashing into everything. But I think like it's it's a fucking microcosm for just like. It's entertaining, but it's a microcosm for just how much the fucking series has fallen. If you look at the best film in the franchise, which again, I'm going to say is the Bourne Supremacy. At the end of the film, um, Jason Bourne smashes Carl Urban's car into a barricade. And, you know, he gets out of the car and he's got his pistol ready. And there's half of you, you know, with that movie lore, expecting that Carl Urban's just going to jump out of his car and he's going to start ninja fighting with Matt Damon. But he's not. He's dead. You know, in the car. Um... So, and it's kind of got that kind of frisson of realism because that's what would happen if you fucking planted someone into a barricade at that speed. But then the fourth one, you do have the ninja fight. The fifth one, sorry, you do have the ninja fight at the end, and everybody's like, you know, scrapping and trying to kill each other and car, smashing cars out, uh, out the way like it's the fucking the Fast and the Furious. It totally lost the point of the franchise, but it's, like what made it great. But also with like. Uh... There's been a, it's like almost ten years between like Ultimatum and like and like uh, Jason Jason Bourne, and before and uh, before that stuff like during Ultimatum and like the Bourne Supremacy that was like before like Snowden before like the NSA leaks all that stuff like was before that you know mm. and they were like kind of pointing out that stuff that oh that stuff could happen and everything it was like a, a technical in a, on a technological level it was like all talking about technology that we didn't really know about it was like oh maybe we suspect that stuff would happen and now you think oh and it, all that stuff has happened now all that stuff has been revealed maybe they have something interesting to say about that but no they just have like like lip service mainly like maybe once they talk he could be the new snowden and that's like that's it yeah that's, it. that's literally all they all they say about like that kind of stuff happening it was a legitimately bad film like legitimately bad it was really disappointing it had like some okay action sequences but the heart and uh even the technical stuff like you say the technical stuff was missing there like there was no excitement in that film no emotional connection it was just uh it was just poorly made i think so really yeah I, I think i like i even like maybe maybe there were actually stuff i like more about the bone legacy yeah. which was just forgettable it was which, by the way, adds, which, by the way, adds on a cl- huge cliffhanger. Yeah. <laughs> it, it never fall. Like they, they never resolved that, but it adds on a huge cliffhanger, which is kind of hilarious. I, I think they should have got revenge in this one. They should have had a, like a scene where they had like a passport of the guy from the Born Legacy, in Born Jason Bourne. They'd be like, "Oh, it's the guy from the Born Legacy. It's like the, just Jeremy Renner. Oh my God, the show's passport on the screen as much as we can. So fucking." <laughs> <laughs> that's like there was the thing about the more legacy where it's like they couldn't hire Matt Damon, but they could definitely have Matt Damon's profile picture and then put it on the screen as much as they could. Yeah. <laughs> it's Jason Bourne. It's connected to Jason Bourne. It's connected to Jason Bourne. I don't know how many times you heard Jason Bourne's like name when he's not even in the film. <laughs> Fucking hell. Uh, desperation. Anyway, with that bombshell, we're gonna move out of the shallows and into the depths. <laughs> to the depths so today on the depths we're going to be talking about the uh the netflix masterpiece that was released recently which of course was iron fist we all know that the uh the netflix marvel shows have been uh absolutely fantastic he had daredevil and luke cage and veronica i want to say veronica mars but that's not right <laughs> totally the wrong show uh, i've totally forgot what jessica the title jones. is jessica jones. jessica jones veronica mars jessica jones that's the one <laughs> veronica <laughs> mars was also a fun show so there you go <laughs> ah, debatable anyway but uh the, the uh netflix shows were, were great and uh, of course we got the next great uh netflix show which was uh iron fist so yeah it's, how was Iron Fist for you guys? Uh, let's talk about sort of general kind of impressions. Uh, 
yeah, how was it? And now, nah, fuck it, fuck general impressions. What did you think about it? How great was Iron Fist? How much of a masterpiece to compete with Daredevil and uh, and Luke Cage? Uh, you know, just you know, mm. I watched the first episode after hearing the uh, reading the giant backlash against the show. I was like. Well, this isn't too bad. Like, this is a solid setup. I mean, it it feels like kind of reminiscent of Arrow, what? if you've seen that show. Like, the, you know, the, the the first episode, like the very first, like, okay, this could go somewhere. It could go somewhere. Mm. The only problem is it didn't. So, there you go. Well, you know? like, nope, nope, I disagree with Let's you. Let's be honest. It, it, yeah, it didn't even start that strong. Like, no. to be honest, it took no, me, it like... Didn't. It took me at least like four watchings to get through the first two episodes. Like I couldn't even watch, was able to watch like a single episode in one sitting. That's how bored I was. No, I, but I was willing to I, give it the benefit of the doubt there. Just you know what the other, in terms of what the other Netflix shows did. But I haven't even seen all episodes because after episode two, uh, I skipped like six episodes or something, or like four or something episodes I skipped. Because uh, Chuchu said, oh, it gets better at like around episode seven, I think it was. It does get and better. And that's where I just started uh, watching it again. Well, the, the thing is, for me, like, it, it was roller coaster. Um, I thought the second... I thought the first show was, was pretty... Not good. I think there was many mistakes, which I'll go into in a second, uh, in the first episode. But in general, for me, it was like... It, was, it wasn't was good, but then it kind of... Just because I kept watching it, it sort of got some interest. And then it got better, and then it got good... And then it got bad. It never got good. I don't know. It got good at one point, and I was into it. I was like, "Oh man, I gotta see the next episode." Like at least once that happened to me. I was like, "Oh, I gotta see what happens next." And it was like, "Ah, no, this is getting bad again." It was. It was like up and down, up and down. Like there would be like little oh. peaks, and then it would be back down to. to... Let, let's talk about some of those. One of those peaks, because there's actually one of the characters I actually enjoyed watching. It's like, oh, I would like to see more of this character. I actually like Vart. You know. No. <laughs> He's. He's supposed to be the guy you hate, to be honest. He's supposed to be like an American Psycho type character. And I did hate him. <laughs> he was the more most relatable one in the show. And he's supposed to be like an American Psycho character. And like, uh, he has some of those times where he has reactions, like, where, like on his face, was like, oh, that's how I feel. Like, there was this one shot of his face while his, like, his father that he killed, by the way, spoilers, <laughs> his father that he killed was back from the dead and just walked in like nothing happened. And you just like close up on his face with like, what the fuck is going on here? Which that's like one of the few moments I actually enjoyed the show. I, um, I, th I think Ward and his father were the highlights of the show. Uh, I think no! Oh, oh, come on. His father ate scenery every time he was on screen. It was great. You know who, who he fuck reminded Faramir. me of? You know who he reminded me of? He reminded me of Albert Wesker in like the rest of the day. <laughs> okay. No, Albert Wait, Wesker is more fun. No, I I totally disagree with you, Metal. That's the thing. I, I agree with Brack. I thought that that actor was totally, totally over the top. He was Not over enough. the top as shit, but man, he every time he was on screen he was just fun to watch. I he was the yeah, I agree. Of that. They were like they were watchable. It was like kind of a train wreck still, but they yeah. were very watchable. Like both him and Ward were watchable. They were I not thought, good. I thought and, the and entire when, when they had scenes together, it was great. Every time they were on screen together and arguing, that was fun. When Ward and his father were fighting, Do you, my my main complaint with the bad guys ultimately they did nothing, and his exactly. grand master scheme exactly. was actually really exactly. fucking weak. <laughs> like, but I expected him to it's, reveal some kind of like massively evil like genuinely like no. inspired scheme but he had nothing up his sleeve no it's like no. the ace in the sleeve no it's empty <laughs> <laughs> and and that's that's also one of the big problems with the show the the characters villains and good guys like change agency agencies like with almost every episode <laughs> they just don't know what they want to do. It changes with every fucking episode. Oh no, okay, okay now I'm working with that guy. No, I I want that now. Now I'm gonna do that now. It's it's horrible, and it's the same. You're working for the hand. No, yeah. I'm not really working for the hand. I'm working for the hand, but it's not the real hand. It's the the other side of that. It's the left hand, not the right hand. <laughs> oh no, shit! The left hand of the, of the hand is also evil. Now I'm back, not working for it's... the hand again. Are we friends again? Yes, we're friends again. The hand sucks, something, something like that. That's how the there's, show went. There's, there's a really good example when um, the hand like come to, like uh, the the main bad guy, 
but uh, I'm just going to call him Frankenstein because I've forgotten what his name is. But, like, he, like, Eric and they're like, oh, hmm. let's cut a new deal. And the guy's like, yeah, okay, let's cut a new deal. And you think, oh, no, he's turning against Danny Rand or something. Nothing ever comes of that. It's never spoken of again. Whatever mm. happened between ah. him and the hand? <laughs> like, what the that fuck? That guy man? from the hand was horrible as well. Like that yeah. Bukake, Bukatu, whatever Katu, the fuck his name was. His name is, yeah, he was awful. Oh, he was awful. Like, he was awful. Actually, the funny thing is, like, it took him multiple episodes to realize he was not blind. <laughs> because the way he acted, like, he was always looking into the distance and, like, not moving anything in his face, you know? I was like, mm. oh, he's, he's blind. Yeah. <laughs> he's the same as Stick. Nope. <laughs> Nope, he's not blind. He's just a horrible. Yeah, he's just a horrible actor. Yeah, I, I, I thought... it's the thing. Like, I, I, I get the whole Zen thing, you know, because of meditation and stuff. But the guy, like, there's a, there's a difference between, you know, like being Zen and having absolutely zero <laughs> charisma. Like, fuck yeah. Hell. And also, like, the show, in my opinion, as as dumb as the whole hand stuff is, I just found the whole Meacham family company thing to be so tedious and not going anywhere and I, I get that why they were in there to connect you know to Danny's past and to ground him and everything and you know but it's just every time they go to a conference room and then oh it's this this weird or oh, now Ward is, is addicted to drugs or shit and I just didn't oh, give yeah. a shit I didn't give a single fuck because none of those characters were sympathetic or interesting to me none of them had interesting stories or any real kind of stake in anything that was happening it was super dumb and Danny is one of the worst offenders in that regard too because no. like I'm the Iron Fist I'm the Iron Fist first of all he's not doing much Iron Fisting <laughs> second of all second of all just get that ah what, one of the biggest things in this fucking show, you know, you got, you, you make, yeah, you make a show about arguably the best martial artist in the Marvel universe, right? So what's the one thing, the one thing you should get right? It's a, it's a fight scenes, right? <sighs> and they, and then the fight scenes look fucking horrible. They're garbage. They're badly filmed. There are too many edits. Like, Ugh. Daredevil looked much better than this. And even, you know, from that standpoint, we already had so many, like, you know, burly, dirty fights in this show. Like, Punisher doing some of the best stuff in that regard in Daredevil Season 2. He's, he's, the, he's the best martial artist that the world has ever seen. And he's got his ass, getting his ass kicked by, like, a 50-year-old dude with a pipe. <laughs> with, yeah. like, an iron pipe. Exactly. And it's not only that he's losing. It's like every time he, you know, he wins, it looks shitty. It doesn't look good. This yeah. show needed like crazy, I don't know, wire action martial arts. And if you tell me, like, no, that's not possible on TV budget, fuck you. Watch AMC's Into the Badlands. That show has amazing martial arts scenes. And it's also Fantastic. Like, like, stupid because you know this guy can fight. Like, it's obviously this guy can fight. So why not put him in his, his outfit from the comics so he can actually hide like a stuntman in exactly. there easily? Because no. they paid for the fucking face of Loras Terrell. So there you uh, go. That's the yeah, only like, reason. That's, like, let, let's be honest. Like the guy playing Daredevil, he probably can't fight either. He probably can get like can do shit. Like, yeah. but, yeah, but he like, looks he looks the he looks the part, and they put him in a suit the entire time during the fight scene. So he, you you won't notice that he can't fight because you can easily hide it. Like this 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 uh, they tried to hide it a couple times with the, like a hoodie, and even yeah. then the fight scenes were horrible because you you can't really use like a real range of like camera dynamics to actually exactly. show it because you have to show it from the back or from like the, the, the like side angle and uh, it just looks bad and like a lot of cuts because you need the cuts in there to show his face as well and it's just it's, it's bad well the, definitely the fight scenes were not as good as they could have been but the thing is with the fight scenes, I think they were really inconsistent. Some of them were really good. Some of them were good, I think. None of them were really opinion. good. I like There's one them. decent one at the end, and that's not even an, where he is starring in. That's the that's a fight uh, where spoilers. Uh, Colleen Wing and uh, well, that was was all right. Good, it was a good fight, but that the, was not the, an the iron sword fist fight, fight in the rain. That was awesome. Yeah, that was. Yeah, that was and that was fun. because. Probably because both those characters, at least I assume Colleen Wing, can actually fight herself. There, like, there sure. Was, but uh, there was... there's at least like her fight scenes in general were not that good either. Like the, her fight scenes with like those those big dudes in like the the, the, the fight ring or whatever. Yeah. Those were horrible as well. Yeah, but the, then there was an then there was though. an accident. Yeah, and then it was an accident, I guess. Now, like, yeah. there were maybe like two 
fight seats that I kind of enjoyed. I only uh, remember that one being I actually. There was like uh, okay. the, the, the there was the fight scene like in the, the hallway fight scene with like the exes uh, the the guys with the exes, like the the X gang or some whatever. Oh right, the that gang. Sense. That was yeah. that was all right, but I it's like... supposed to be like the big show off, and it's like ah, oh, that's all right. And that uh, you wanted to say something? It was one fight yeah, that, that you uh, enjoyed? Yeah, there were a couple of fights I enjoyed. The, the one outside the elevators. I forgot my days. And the bottom of the apartment building, the one outside in the elevators was pretty cool. It was pretty fun. With the hatchet, you mean? With yeah, the hatchet they, guy. Is that, is that the hatchet guys? I didn't notice that they had the hatchets, but like, like, that's like that was a the big point. They're like they show off, like oh, he throws the hatchet at the guy and he avoids it with like. Yeah, you that, don't that, remember that, that at all? Yeah, no, no I, I don't remember that. But I remember it being a decent fight, and also the scene where he had to fight the 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 the, 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 the like a bunch of opponents. In yeah, like where it's like thing. where it's actually for the first time in the show, like a pulpy kung fu movie, which it's supposed yeah. to be. And that that, uh, that final guy he fights has a decent he has a decent yeah. martial arts show off with him, I think. That's that was, that's that also good. those those two were the fights that I enjoyed as well. Yeah. Uh, by the way, you're doing something wrong when the best fight in your sh- your show is directed by the Risa. <laughs> that's the episode <laughs> that's directed by the Risa. So, oh, yeah. oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Like, the Risa on that show is probably the only guy who is like a huge fan of like kung fu movies and like has seen like kung fu shit and he's trying to do his best work. Uh, that's that's what I'm kind of sure of because that dude loves this kung fu shit. He, yeah. he already made a kung fu movie before this, so yeah. But um, yeah, that's the only fun episode in my opinion. That's the only one like where like oh yeah, let's just go with like the the cheesy kung fu uh, movie aspect of it. Just a lot of fight, like a bunch of dudes in like a in condition like a like a fighting movie or something. A fucking, you know, I think we mentioned it before, but a fucking terrible fight in both storyline and choreography, you know, was the fight where he's in the back of a lorry, like a back of a truck, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. there's like one guy, you know, and it's just like, dude, aren't you supposed to be like the 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 like this undefeatable fucking martial artist and the dude's kicking his ass and like finally when Danny Rand actually comes back and like defeats him it's like basically just cuts to these kind of like Power Ranger-esque thing of him just like waving his hands about (laughs) and like a guy like smashing up against the wall it's just like the worst oh yeah, that's that point horrible. so bad it's awful and just in terms of you were talking about you know the show being its strongest when it's diving into this pulpy kung fu stuff and I, I actually thought that was the thing they would be going for after you know Luke Cage being like this great I don't know just in terms of tone and theme you know working so great they and like putting the black exploitation stuff in there so yeah. I was like okay this Iron Fist they're gonna make that into like a kind of I don't know, uh, 70s kung fu flick like a Bruce Lee, inspired like, piece. Uh, kind yeah, of movie. yeah, you know? just in general fun. And then what I got was weird, dreary company conspiracy with a side of hand. Uh, yeah, dumb. Yeah, like the company's hot. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so uh, it feels so out of place. Yeah, like it just I, doesn't I, I, I don't want to see like a lawyer movie. That's it's just horrible. It feels like that was in the show, so they had like a cheap place where they could shoot a lot of scenes to get that show up to 12 episodes or 13 episodes, and was the only reason that stuff was in the show, because I... they didn't have enough other locations. And I was like, ah. I, I yeah, but they should have like made it like Enter the Dragon type, like like yeah. just fun. Just I, make I... it like a fun kung fu pulpy TV show. I, which I fits so much you. better. Yeah. I agree with you in in uh, on a technical level. I agree with you. That's what they should have done. But however, in what they did do, because the uh, often the kung fu stuff was handled really quite badly. And the worst thing yeah. about the show, which I'm sure we're going to get into in a second, was the main character himself. Oh, he was, was so bad. Fucking awful. Um, but. I, for me, the most interesting thing was Ward and his father in the company shenanigans. That's what that made that like series no. kind of tick along and sort of be entertaining. It didn't go anywhere stuff, though. And the fact that the girl was hot. I mean, like not not the company yeah, girl, but the, the, the Chinese girl. I mean, like. But their relation with Danny didn't go anywhere. Their their importance for the main plot, which I assume was supposed to be like the hand, you know, having the root in the company and everything, didn't go anywhere. And the switch around by by Ward at the end was like totally unbelievable. Like, 
Okay, now he's suddenly going to, okay, I'm going to help you and everything. What the yeah. fuck? But look, I, I, I yeah, kind of, no he, sense whatsoever. I, I, so, no, 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 I understand he I hates his father. Order. I understand yeah, he but he hates Danny anything, too. But he hates yeah, Danny too. But he says too. that as well. He literally says that. It's like, I still hate you. Uh, he still he says that while helping him because he hates his father more. Great. But no, but at the end, he's like, at the very end, he's like, oh, this is, this is. Uh, it's, this is working all right. This is uh, we're okay now. And I'm like, no, why? No, why are no, you? No. Are you okay? I don't get his motivation at all because I I, I kind of believed it, but he was like, okay, just give me the money and just want to go. I just yeah. want to get the fuck out of it. That I made sense. Yeah. That made sense. And then there's another turnaround, and ah, oh, god, the only the, thing that that remotely felt first. real real to me was like his relationship to his sister. I there were some points in that show where I felt like, okay, these these feel like they care for each other. But she she was even worse, to be honest. Like, she switched around so much that I have... Like, by the end, there was, like, this, like... Maybe it's an after credit sequence or something where she's with Davos. They're like, ah, oh, we should kill Danny Rand. It was, like, like a minute ago, before this end yeah. credit sequence, she actually yeah. liked Danny Rand. Yeah, he just, just saved her ass. It just didn't make any fucking sense. It's like, they're obviously yeah. setting her up to be the bad guy at the next show, but it's at the next season or something, but it's just, like... What? Nothing in that show made sense. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, so, so I guess let's talk about like what is I think unanimously can be agreed upon is the worst, the worst point in the film, which is Danny Rand. Himself. The Iron Fist. Himself. Yeah, the Iron Fist, the the main actor in your show, <laughs> is just like the fucking worst. Immediately from the from the beginning, when it started, I was just like, no. This, this is not working. <laughs> and then it just never got better. I'm Danny uh, Rand. I'm Danny there's Rand. There's also this... <laughs> in the beginning, there's like this... this like, you forget about Bad Ed. There's this plot point with like, where he's buddying up with this homeless dude. <laughs> and there's like, showing like, show me on the phone. Oh my god. Just Google Danny Rand. But there's like a funny Easter egg there. Or not Easter egg, but uh, a mistake they made. Because they show like the website of like the Red Industries. And you can still see the the interface of like that they're in the picture se segment of the phone. <laughs> so they're not even an actual <laughs> website. Oh, you can okay. see that's, that's an image from like a picture. Because you still <laughs> see like the, the, the slide to the next picture. You oh, still see God. That it. Uh, <laughs> that guy dies like the next episode and you forget about it immediately. Wanna one of the things that immediately like I remember I was sitting there watching in the first episode and it's just like what the fuck Danny Rand is a fucking retard like I literally I honestly went through the first couple of episodes literally thinking Danny Rand was an actual honest to god retard like <laughs> there was this moment where like Danny Rand comes back right Ward gets in his face or whatever then he kidnaps Wards in his car right and then like Ward pulls a gun on him so Danny Rand, like, smashes his car into a fucking barricade, you know, and, like, Ward's screaming at him, it's not over, you know, this isn't over, like that, well, well, Danny Rand runs off, and then assassins come to kill Danny Rand, assassins who he recognizes from being Ward's security guards from Rand Enterprises, and he actually has to ask one of them, who sent you? <laughs> there are actually literally points in this in, in, in the show where I, he was channeling like that that Ben Stiller uh, uh, character from like Tropic Thunder, like the movie inside a movie where he plays like a mentally yeah. challenged person and it feels like he's challenging that. In also, in <laughs> why, if you want to convince someone that you're you know Danny Rand who is supposed to be dead, why would you go to the person that has treated you like complete piece of shit during your childhood? Like that was yeah. the last person I would go to, even if if that person owed to go go to uh, owed the company. Now I would go to a fucking lawyer. First thing, why yeah, would you go to the person Danny that Rand's... was a complete asshole to you? You mean Bart? Like especially yeah. like they showed a flashback where he's just like a complete asshole like yes. playing like risk or something it's like exactly. fuck you daddy you exactly. piece of shit daddy and then yeah. like, oh. why would you try to convince that person know. even if he accepts that you're Danny and he would pr fuck you over again what <laughs> what the fuck yeah, I don't get indeed. It. like but also like it's got that kind of like ah uh, obviously it you know, it's needed for the show and stuff, but on a logical on a logical point, why don't you just go to someone and tell them so much personal information that is that's just irrefutable? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's amazing. You remember the scene with the M and M's? 
Yeah. yeah. Like, and, this, uh, and somebody told me this because I didn't know it myself. But it's kind of hilarious that he, like, uh, the, his way of showing that, that he's Danny Red is by taking out all the brown M&Ms. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and, 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 and it's, you know, they try to explain it away by, you know, I was so young. There, there is no blood. Uh, there's no blood from me left, or. You know, there are no fingerprints of me, and I have no living rev- relatives. There's got to be a better way, man. Yo. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, get Why a specialist on that shit. First? <laughs> Apparently, he still has enough money left. So, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so, so dumb. So, if Rack also, and I were, were to- talking about something that's interesting. Yeah. So, the Defenders is coming next, right? Yeah. Uh, and Iron Fist is going to be part of the Defenders. So Brack and I were, were were talking, you know, I think in the comic books, right, that you have the Heroes for Hire with Danny Rand and Luke Cage. But Brack yeah. and I were, were saying, how the fuck does this Danny Rand, like, how can he possibly be Luke Cage's friend? <laughs> like, yes, can you like see those fuck. two hanging out in real life? Fuck. Yeah, they're, they're supposed to be like a camaraderie there. Like, like, they're not just friends. They're like brothers. You know what I mean? They're like, uh, they're supposed to be like the Shen, Shane Black duo of the of of the Marvel universe. They're supposed to be like a kind of a little weapon type uh, friendship that that's supposed to build and stuff like that. Yeah, but dope. I can't see that happening with with these two actors. Like I can yeah. see it happen with the guy playing Luke Cage and another actor. I just can't see it happening with this guy playing Iron Fist. I can, I can, I can just see, I can just see like in the Defenders like HQ or whatever. Basically, Danny Rand sitting down in the chair and Luke Cage is yelling at him, "Get the fuck out of my chair, cracker!" <laughs> <laughs> but like, he throws so many hissy fits in this, uh, uh, in this, uh, in this, in this show. Like yeah, he's, he's the time he's like, he's talking about, I'm. I'm a, I'm trained by the best Buddhists in the world. I can control my emotions completely. What did he say about my father? Or like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he smacks Brack's the child in the, the leg is, with. But the thing is, like, like Brack's doing it because Brack has just like sexy, sexy Barry White voice. It's it's like it's more like uh, I was raised by Buddhists in the mountains. It's like this. It's like. <laughs> no, we're supposed to buy who was a fucking tough badass. But You've got a perm about... for fuck's sake. Also, speaking about being raised by Buddhists in the mountains, perm! we don't... A fucking perm! Like a poodle! We don't... Yeah. We Where don't... did he get his hair products? In the... What, it's Charlotte or something? What, what yeah. was it called? Christ! Where yeah, did but... he get his hair products? Where, get, where did he get, get anything? We barely see any of his training or whatever. His, his no, no, no. About you Anything him... about his life in the past don't... few years. We don't, we don't learn we don't, anything we... about his. Yeah, him. we don't get to see barely anything. We literally get oh. to see nothing. Not a single the shot. Is, the only stuff of Ken Lao, it's Ken Lao, I think. Uh, Ken Lao, right? The only stuff of Ken Lao you see are like those, those, those five like fake looking rocks <laughs> that they're hanging out on the entire yeah. time. Like, here are some plastic rocks. And Occasionally that's you get to see Danny Rand beaten by a stick. And why that's pleasurable, it doesn't explain his like <laughs> magic kind of you know transformation uh, to being right, beaten by a ma- by a you know fuck your karate lessons just just have your mother beat you repeatedly with a broomstick and it'll turn you into the Iron Fist. And, uh, like his origin story uh, consists of him beating a dragon and then taking out his heart and then he gets power from that. Uh, that's what I wanted to see. I wanted to yeah, see me to too. Fight a fucking dragon <laughs> because that's cool. It's not I just like... wanted to see more of you know his actual training and origin story in general. Like, but they consider on all that stupid fucking Meacham bullshit. Yeah, it feels <laughs> the like the rent company. It definitely felt like somebody that like they were ashamed of like the the comic materials. We are better the the comics materials. Like from the showrunner, like he never read any of those uh, of that shit. Let's be honest. Right. You, they felt like they were off it, and they were like. It was just shit. It was just shit. You know, the dragon... I think it's either one or two things. The dragon was sadness. Representing sadness. And Danny Rand ripped out his heart and grew a perm. And, like, outdid the sadness. You know? Or, alternatively, the dragon is, like, drug abuse. It's literally like he was addicted to heroin. And then it managed to escape Mm. his drugs hell. (laughs) I don't know. 
But uh, the I, funny thing, by the way, we were talking about the best fight scene, but I actually I didn't mention the best fight scene because the best fight scene is the 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 black and white footage of like the Iron Fist fighting in like World yeah. War Two or something. Those because, were the best fight scenes. And because like, guess what? That guy was wearing a costume with a mask. Yeah, and he's like using both like both Iron Fist on both his fists. And he's actually like using decent choreography, and then like did it cut into hell. And it actually looked pretty good. But yep. yeah. I, I I will throw out a few a few props for the for the show because despite the fact that it was weakest it was the weakest Marvel offering, I did enjoy my time with it and I was like sad when it ended. It was mixed, it was mixed and it it didn't end satisfactorily either. But uh I still in, enjoyed my time with that show and and wished that I could continue watching it. So there is that to be said about it. Um, I know you guys probably don't feel the same, but I will also throw out great props for the best quote in the entire fucking show, which is the, the quote from the bad guy, which is like, Iron Fist, what's that? Is that a sex toy? <laughs> <laughs> That's actually... Uh, I, I was literally just... thinking that the whole time anybody said Iron Fist and then finally the bad guy like <laughs> said it out loud for what was going through my mind. <laughs> ah, good stuff. Uh, the Iron Fist didn't work most of the time. There's like some hilarious like sequence where like the Iron Fist doesn't work and he's shaking his arm like it's a flashlight with like the batteries <laughs> not connecting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get my chi working by doing the wank hand. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking uh, moron. Like, I really hope that in, like, the Defenders, like, everybody, like, at least points him on his shit. Like, I, mean, I feel like the characters, in, in, like, the Defenders, they're, like, they don't have time for his bullshit. Like, yeah. Luke Gates or Daredevil or Jessica Jones. You know Jessica Jones? Like, whenever he throws a hissy fit, he's like, oh, my God, shut the fuck up when he just slaps <laughs> in his face, you know? <laughs> Oh man, basically he's the guy who just gets bullied like all the time in the Defenders. <laughs> That'd be hilarious and wrong, but funny. Uh, he's the guy, like the guy, the guys are basically saying, "Hey, what, can you get me a soda out the closet?" And he's like, "Oh yeah, sure, I'll get you a soda." And then they literally like, like Fargo, they just like nail the door shut when he's in there and <laughs> just stand outside laughing at him. Yeah. Oh. So yes, anyway, that's <laughs> our opinion on the kind of shit fest that was Iron Fist. But uh, how about you, old valued listener? Um, yeah, please sound off in the comment section if you have uh, any opinions on that or any of the other things we've talked about in this episode. And with that, that brings us to the end of our visit to the ocean floor. Please join us next time. You taste Unizushi and are immediately sick on your mother's best lingerie.